And good evening, everybody. I'm Jackie Hayes. It is certainly my privilege to uh, work for Norton Healthcare and to especially be involved with such a great program as what we have tonight. Uh, we are beginning our very first series called Go Confidently, and there is no one any better to help us get started on this than Jill Conley. What a rock star she is. I had the pleasure of meeting her tonight, and I feel very blessed. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes that I would like to share with everyone. Uh, first off, I would like to thank very much Lenny Meyer and the Healthcare Foundation team for making this event possible tonight. So thank you, Lenny and, and the team. Also, a great big thank you to our vendors who are in the other room. If you didn't have a chance to stop by and take a look at what they're doing in our community, uh, please do so after our program tonight. If you have not been able to find a seat in the room, we do have um, video screens set up outside. So again, um, we just want everybody to be able to see. And also because we had such interest in the program tonight, we are live streaming this. That's why we're trying to get on time so those people who might be checking it out would be able to find us on the web. Uh, if you can text quietly, you can uh, text a friend to go to NortonHealthcare.com and there on the home page will be the link for Go Confidently, and they can watch Jill live tonight as she begins to speak. Um, also, on your uh, uh, chairs, we are very privileged to share with you um, a wonderful uh, booklet that talks about exactly what Jill Conley has been going through, the documentary that has been put together. Uh, and we are very grateful to the Courier Journal and to photographer Sue Bryce for their permission to be able to assemble this book and to share it with you. Um, it's incredible. Also in that packet of material, you will find note cards. Uh, as we're getting going, you can maybe jot just a little note uh, to Jill, and there is a decorate, decorated box in the back of the room, and you can just drop those notes in there for Jill. I'm sure that she will get a, a lift just from hearing from you. She is such a giving person who turns everything that could be all about herself to turning it around into helping others and what a, a light she truly is. Um, again, there's also a valuation sheet. Let us know about this program. Let us know maybe what other kind of healthcare issues you would like to hear about because I think when you, you hear a diagnosis or you find yourself in this dark time of trouble, especially on healthcare needs, you need to know where you can turn and who you can talk to. And so maybe there's another topic that we can join together and share information because getting information helps us to fight and to be strong and we like that very much. All right, um, now let's get on with the show. We are very glad that you all could be part of our very first ever uh, series, Go Confidently. And uh, it's something that we are very proud of. We created this at Norton Healthcare, and thanks to my boss and some of the others in the marketing office, and to, again, Lenny Meyer, for putting this together for men and women to you know, realize their full potential through meaningful discussions on health-related topics. And we certainly could not think of a better person to kick this off than Jill Conley. Jill's story was brought to the attention of many of us on, of many of us on October 28th, in the Courier Journal when they published an incredible story about a truly incredible woman. Jill is an advocate. After meeting her, I know she is an inspiration. She is a very rare human being. Her style and her grace and her ability to connect with other people, especially in terms of what she's going through, is truly amazing. But you don't have to take my word for it. Just yesterday, we received a very special message from Hoda of the Today Show, who met Jill. Take a look. Hi, everybody. I wish I could be there to witness what you're about to see. Jill Connolly. I just like saying her name. Jill Connolly is one of those people who you meet in your lifetime and she changes your life. She changed mine. I was at a breast cancer event in the Cayman Islands and I saw Jill in the lobby and she was so full of life. She's one of those people who's lit from within and when you see her, she is infectious and contagious and you want to be around her. And she told me she had breast cancer and I you know, assumed she was in remission and everything was great. I just, you know, she's such a light. So I'm giving the speech at the event and for some reason I just looked over there and there was Jill and I couldn't take my eyes off of Jill and her husband Bart. And in the middle of my speech I thought, you know what, 
I think she should come up here and speak for a minute. So at this big event, I asked Jill if she wouldn't mind coming up. So she came up to the podium and she said hi to everybody and how great everyone looked. And then she told the crowd out there that the doctors told her she only had months to live. And the entire room went dead silent. It was just so quiet. And then she said something that just surprised me. She said, and I'm the luckiest girl in the room. And she said, I'm the luckiest girl in the room because I have him. And she pointed at her husband, Bart. And she said, I'm the luckiest person in the room because I get to share my story and I get to help people. And you know what? She is the luckiest person in the room. And I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people because I got to meet her. And now I feel like you guys are some of the luckiest people because you get to see her. Jill Connolly. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Jill was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer the day before her 32nd birthday. Life is so unfair. Six months after she had just married Bart. She's gone through numerous surgeries and countless rounds of chemotherapy and radiation at the Norton Cancer Institute, where Dr. Janelle Seeger and the staff have become very important to Jill and her family. Jill calls them all rock stars, and she loves them. It's very obvious. Jill's cancer eventually went into remission, only to return a short time later in her breastbone, and it has now spread to the fluid in her lungs, and her cancer is now considered inoperable. But that seems to have only energized this young woman. As she told me a little bit earlier tonight, again, she wasn't turning it inward about herself, but she said to me, what difference can I make in another person's life? That is a gift. That is a gift. And she is making a difference. Her message truly is one of hope and beauty. Her message is of living with and not dying from cancer. Jill says, as Hoda referred to, she's living her dream. Her story touched award-winning international photographer Sue Bryce, who flew Jill to Paris, France, for a photo shoot. The resulting photos and a documentary film spread quickly through social media, and that's how all these folks are finding out about her from the Today Show and the People Magazine and Huffington Post. And through every story and every interaction, Jill truly is an inspiration. And we are lucky to have her with us tonight. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> the light that shines of woman who is as beautiful on the inside as the outside. Jill Connolly. Thanks. Um, I have a, a mic on my back, so I'm going to sit like it's in my family room. <laughs> Tell me, if you, can you guys hear me? Good. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody that is here tonight. It means the absolute world to me. I'm looking around and I'm seeing my friends and my family, especially everybody that has traveled um, from out of state. There's many people, my aunt, uncle. Valerie, uh, Bart's cousin, and I know there's many more. So I just want to thank you guys. Also, I want to thank my mom. I know it's live stream, so I want to give a shout out to Rosie. Love you, mom. Uh, she's in Vegas, and I want to give a shout out to uh, my stepdad, Pete, and my brother, Sean, and to all my friends and family, like all around. Uh, I never thought I would say all around the world and internationally, but. I can honestly say that, and I don't mean to sound conceited. <laughs> so, thank you, uh, everybody. So, anyways, uh, whoops, sorry. Um, first, um, I just want to kind of recap of the video um, about how I found out that I had cancer. So, like it said, it was one day before my 32nd birthday. It's a day that I will honestly never forget. And I had an inverted nipple. And I had it um, for about a year, completely ignored it, and didn't really tell anybody. And when I moved to Kentucky, uh, Bart 
um, Felling showed my mother-in-law, Betty, and they came over one night for a barbecue, and Bart was like, you gotta show my mom your boob, and I was like, <laughs> all right, Betty, come in my bedroom, I wanna show you my T-I-T-S. And so I showed her, and the next day she called me, and she was like, you know what, I hope you're not mad, made you an appointment um, with my family doctor, and so, you know, um, that was that. So she made me the appointment, I go, and he, um, and it's funny, uh, on the way to, to the doctor, I was talking to my mom, and she was like, uh, so what do you think it is? I'm like, it's probably the cat. And we had a cat, and I'm like, it probably scratched me, you know, a while back, it probably got infected, whatever. And so my mom was like dead set, you know, it was the cat. And I thought it was too, because, you know, looking back, we were all so uneducated. And that was like, you know, the key to like everything, my journey that I'm on now. I was so uneducated. And so when I went um, and met the doctor, uh, it's just a day I'll never forget. And he just looked at me and he was like, you know what, Jill, I'm 99.9 that you have breast cancer. And I remember I stood up and my knees buckled and I just fell like on the floor to this complete stranger that I didn't even know. And I was looking at him and I just remember saying, I can't have cancer. I just got married, I just moved here. And I even said, I'm a Vegas girl. And, and I remember, he, this is the funny part, he looked at me and he was like, we're not gonna charge you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, thanks. Yeah. So, shout out to Dr. Morrison. Thanks. So, um, the hard part was, you know, getting in the car and my mom calling me right away. And she's like, oh my God, was it the cat? And I was like, no, mom, it wasn't. And that's just a day I'll never, ever forget. Because I look around and I'm sure there's so many women and men in here that have gone through what I've gone through. And that phone call is something that you will never, ever, ever forget. And to the ones that have never got that phone call, I pray to God that you will never get that phone call. And so, you know, I, I get home, you know, and, you know, telling my husband, you know, my in-laws, my brothers, uh, just everybody in my life that meant so much to me. I think that was more devastating than anything. And so right away the next day, we went to the um, emergency room. They did, you know, the CAT scan, everything. And then they, you know, reassured me because, you know, that night I remember falling asleep and I was like, you know what, there might be a chance that he misdiagnosed it. And unfortunately, he didn't. And then, you know, after, you know, they came back and they're like, you know what, the scan showed that you have cancer. And then uh, um, that's where, Everybody, I, this is where I like, this is where my angel appeared, Dr. Janelle Seeker. So, so she gets my story, my case, whatever. So I'm in Dr. Janelle Seeker's hands. And so, you know, we get there and she's like, you know, it's correct, you have cancer, whatever, and this is what we have to, like, you know, this is what we have to do right away. We started, you know, intense chemo. Um, and then, you know, after chemo, uh, we had the double mastectomy and then um, radiation and so on. So with that, um, not to like backtrack, but before I started all that, I just remember like being in Vegas, like I bartended never thought in a million years I'd make the money I did. I always told our, all my friends, oh my God, I make stripper money. You know, <laughs> I go to work and I make at least $500 a day for slinging drinks and watching these people gamble. And as soon as they hit a jackpot, I'm the one that pays them. As soon as they hit it, they're the one that pays me 10%. Life is good, you know? But being a Vegas girl, like also, you know, it's looking good you know, being tan, so I was like so infatuated with tanning, hair extensions, doing my nails, like always trying to look good. And I thought that was so, so important to me. And looking back, 
it's just like so crazy how stupid and like minor and crazy that is to me. But if I never went through this, I might have thought, you know, the exact same thing, like how important looks and you know, it's just insane how, and I don't want to blame it on magazines and television, but I'm sure it's like a huge part, but I just was so, you know, wanted to be like that hot girl, the bartender, whatever. Never in a million years did I ever think that I would be where I am today. And so, uh, like I said, like just going through all that, um, it's just so minute and so crazy. And unfortunately, you know, I've said in so many different interviews and uh, speaking events, the hardest part about going through everything that me and my husband have gone through, the hardest part was when we found out that we couldn't have children. And I always was like, I'm gonna be the best mom. And my husband, you know, he's a football player and his dad was a football player and he's gonna be a coach in this. And when you find out that day, you know, that God, you know, stripped you the rights of having a child is, it was more gut-wrenching than when I found out I had cancer. You know what, God, like, take away my breasts, take away everything, like, you know, give me cancer, but don't take that right away from my husband. And when he took that right away from me, that was something that took me a long time, a long time to get over. And I know now, it's not God, you know, it's, it wasn't him, you know, like, we have, we, we have two dogs, we have a cat, we have a full house, you know? <laughs> Tell you the truth, I don't even want a kid now. <laughs> yeah, I wake up in the morning, I found piles of turds <laughs> everywhere. And I can't even imagine, like, having a baby. Like, my mom even was like, you know what? Maybe you should put a diaper on Honeybear or Stanley. And I was like, ah, no, we don't need a diaper because he's shit in the corner in the family room, in the closet, behind the couch. Yeah. So, anyways, excuse that. That's word. <laughs> um, so, uh, to reminisce about uh, the day I lost my hair. Dr. Seeger told me, she said, you know what, when you start chemo, it's gonna probably be the 15th day after you start it that you're probably gonna lose your hair. So Bart takes me to Gatlinburg and I was super excited about the trip. And we're driving home and I was like, oh my God, I feel like something bit me. Do you feel like something bit you? And he's like, no. And my head was superly tingly, not thinking it was the 15th day and this is the day that I'm gonna lose my hair. So we get to my house, and uh, at the time we were running a house, and it was me, Bart, and uh, my brother-in-law, Patrick, lived with us. And I remember I was just laying in bed and, you know, like itching my head, and then the unthinkable happens. You prepare, like any woman in this room that has gone through this, you know the feeling. You know it's going to happen, but you always pray to God it's not going to happen to you and like itching my head and it's just clumps and clumps and clumps and I'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god this is not happening so I'm laying there and Bart comes in and, and I'll never forget the day Patrick is mowing the lawn and uh, Bart is outside ha helping him and they come inside and they're like are you okay and I'm like yeah yeah, yeah I'm all right um, I'm gonna go to Outback do you guys want something and they're like, yeah, and I go to Outback, and I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, in 24 hours, like, I'm probably gonna be bald. Like, I knew this day was gonna happen, like, I'm not prepared for it. And I remember getting up, going to the bathroom, and the waiter coming over to me, and I ordered a couple glasses of wine because I was freaking out, and he was like, don't, like, worry, I got your wine. And I was like, like, why? And he's like, my mom is going through the exact same thing you are, and I'm like, how do you know like what I'm going through? And he's like, I like don't know how to tell you this, but you know, you got like a couple like bald patches. <laughs> so I was like, well, get my dinner <laughs> and my wine. So I get up and there's like hair all over the seat, rush home and like totally in tears. And then my mom flew out from Las Vegas and um, the next day, I, I get in the shower, so then it's 
probably like every woman that's gone through chemo. If you don't wash your hair or don't touch your hair, it's not going to fall out. So I'm in the shower, like doing the whole like <laughs> body, like, okay. And I get out of the shower and my mom is like, it's, it's time like for us to go. And I'm like, why? And she's like, Jill, it's time for us to go. So, uh, you know, I look in the mirror and basically it's just like, it looks like an asteroid like hit like every like section of my head. And so we go and the lady at the salon, you know, was like, do you want me to close down the salon? And I'm like, no, I don't want you to close down the salon. Like, why would I, you know, like this, no. If I, you close on the salon, then it's showing that cancer won. Like, hell no. Like, shave it, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And so um, it was, you know, weeks later um, where it just fell out, where it's like, it, it's like a baby's butt. And then, but uh, to be honest with you guys, <clears throat> the hardest part was losing my eyebrows and eyelashes. And we were, um, in, you know, we were in Cincinnati, and we were going to, um, um, I think it was a wedding, and I was, we were at Jenny and Jamie's house and uh, washing my face, and I look in the, I look um, in the sink, um, and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, don't look in the mirror, don't look in the mirror. I'm looking at my eyebrows and eyelashes, and then I look in the mirror, and I was like, Oh my God, and when you lose your eyelashes and eyebrows, you look completely different than when you lose your hair. I look like a Teletel baby. <laughs> so I walked down the steps and I was like this, and Bart was like, what's wrong? And I'm crying and I was like, oh my God, it's so ugly, it's so ugly. And so I show him and he's like, are you kidding me? My girlfriend Jenny right away is like, oh, we can paint those on. <laughs> She's like, and we can glue those on. Well, every woman in this room with cancer knows when you lose your eyelashes, you cannot glue them on because there's nothing to glue them to. She painted me the best like eyebrows, but the eyelashes were like falling off. They're crooked. I was like, this is like insane. And I think that was like, you know, the heart. I think that was harder than losing, you know, my hair is when I was like lost my eyebrows and eyelashes. And also to like, Oh, we got noise making. Oh, I can take my necklace off. No, no, that's okay. It's probably my necklace that's failing, so I'll just, hold on one second. You need to get it? I got it. Okay. Okay. It. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's so much better. Okay. Um, also, too, like, not to get personal, but, like, and I probably will get super personal by the end of this is like when you go through cancer, here I am a newlywed, and all the medicine they pump in you, like your sex drive goes right out the window. And that was just so hard for me, because like I remember, you know, as soon as I started the chemo, Dr. Seeger had us meet with um, a ther I don't want to, I don't know if it was a therapist or a psychologist or whatever, and she told us, you know, I know you guys are newlyweds, but everything that she's going through, like your sex drive is going to go out the window. And I was like, no, not me. Are you kidding me? Look at my husband, he's so beautiful. I love him, whatever. And it just was so hard because I just kept telling my husband, like, you know what, Bart, it's not you, it's not you. And like, that's where I'm so grateful for it because I know until this day, like he knows like it's, it's not him, it's David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, and <laughs> um, a couple things also I want to talk about is the day before the double mastectomy. I was standing in the mirror forever, and I was just sitting there staring, completely naked, and I'm like, all right, girls, like you have been with me for 32 years, you know, you gotta go. Um, and it was just like so hard because like, you know, uh, every woman, like I thought a, your breasts like define you, like that's what makes you a woman. Like you see in magazines, like, you know, in Play, uh, like Playboy, Victoria's Secret, you know, like a woman's breasts like is what makes them beautiful and sexy. And I'm like, 
oh my God, like when I get that taken out of me, like what's that gonna make me feel like? And I would just remember staying there forever and just like kept thinking like, is my husband gonna look at me the same? Am I gonna feel like a woman? You know, and it was just so hard. And then the day of the surgery, they remove them and then it's the day after, you know? And it's like, you know, you're bandaged up, whatever, and you're just like, oh my God. And then finally, like, you know, when they take away the bandages and then you see the scars, like you honestly like feel like, oh my God, I don't feel like a woman. And that's like the whole thing with this, like this whole speech, because I'm not gonna lie to you. There was a period in my life when like I did not have my breasts, I did not have my hair, I did not have eyebrows, eyelashes, nothing. And I felt so far from a woman, it wasn't even funny. And there was a, like, Bart knows, there was a time when I was taking out Honey Bear and our neighbor across from us, like her and her girlfriend were going out and I was standing behind a tree and just like stalking. And I was like, oh my God, look how hot she looks. And she looks like a woman. Like I used to look like that. And I walked in the house crying and Bart's like, what's wrong? And I was like, Running across the street, looks so hot and so pretty. And Bart was like, are you kidding me? Look in the mirror. You look the exact same. And I was like, no, you look in the mirror. Like, I don't look like that anymore. And he had no tolerance and no sympathy whatsoever. And he's like, are you kidding me? It's like what's in. Like, I don't care about your hair. I don't care about your boobs, your eyelashes, eyebrows, whatever. Like, you know, and that's what, like, Bart like taught me so much about being beautiful like within and just to make something perfectly clear because I've gotten so many emails like from women like we don't have a Bart you know like what do we do you know we're single you know or so many emails from women that like found out I had cancer and my husband like bounced you know shame on them and it's just like people in this room and the emails and the support group, you know, and Bart, that's what made me get my, my self-esteem, you know, back and everything. So, you know, to the men out there, like, especially since it's live stream, to any man out there that leaves a woman that's going through this, shame on you. And I so believe in karma. It will bite you in the ass. It truly do. One email that I got that stuck out in my head was from a, a woman. Um, her mom was a supermodel in the 80s, um, and I'm not going to say names or anything, but her email was probably the most, um, there are several emails that I've gotten that have stood out to me, but hers, um, her mom was a supermodel in the 80s and just lived a life, and she said, you know, the money that she made, the men that she was with, everything. And then my mom got cancer, breast cancer. And when she went through the double mastectomy, everything, it was heartbreaking because it destroyed her. And she just went in a shell and she felt so ugly. And like, I just want my mom back. And she's like, when she saw the light that shines and she saw your documentary and that she saw like what you were doing and getting out there and showing your scars and your breasts, I got my mom back and I can't thank you enough. And out of, it's those emails that I get that mean so much to me. And you know, it's just insane. Like I just wish like tonight I could pull up all the emails of everybody all around the world you know, and I've said it in so many different speeches, like New Zealand, Australia, Africa, um, Italy, I mean, when China, I mean, they sent us a video um, from China and Italy and Poland, and I was on the front page of the newspaper. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where's my check? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, where's my check? <laughs> I, it was just so amazing to me because it's like all around the world, like women and men are touch, like touched by this. And when this, like this daughter of the supermodel, you know, emailed me, like, 
You know, my mom was like, you know, the it girl. and Every man fantasized about her. And then she gets breast cancer. And then, you know, her money maker was like ripped out of her. And she's like so depressed and like literally wants to die. Then she sees your video and you brought life back to her. That brought life into me. And it's just like insane how, you know, it, I just can't say enough. Like, it, it's just crazy how God works, you know, like, I, I just can't express that enough. So I just, that means the world to me. And so when I was in remission, my, my dear friend, Nikki Klasser, contacted me and she's in Seattle. And so she had me go out to Seattle and we did pictures. And she was like, you know what, Jill, do you want to show like your breasts, whatever? And I was like, hell yeah, because I wanted her to send it into magazines before Breast Cancer Month. I was like, you know what, they always talk about it, but they never like show, like they, they never show it. They talk about it and they always show older women. But nowadays it's younger and younger and younger. And so show it, like I got nothing to hide. So we did like all these, you know, unbelievable pictures were absolutely beautiful. Nikki is just an unbelievable photographer. She sends them in to her mentor, Sue Bryce. And so the next day, Nikki calls me and she's like, oh my God, Jill, you'll never believe. Sue Bryce contacted me and Sue's going to contact you tomorrow. And so Sue at the time um, was on Creative Live. And so they did a Skype call and so that's where Sue was like, oh my God, you know, I want to surprise you and do a trip to, hey Rebecca, um, <laughs> to uh, Paris. And so I went to Paris, France with Sue Bryce and her un unbelievable team. And to this day, I've become like such dear friends with everybody. Um, Sally, like just everybody, I can't say enough. And so we did this unbelievable documentary, The Light That Shines, that you guys just watched. And as soon as it hit the internet, I think in one week it was 600,000 views. Never expected it. I know Sue didn't expect it. Nikki didn't expect it. Well, then that's where the Today Show called. Um, it was three weeks later, and we got a call from the Today Show. So me and Bart um, and Sue were flying out to uh, to to New York to do the Today Show with uh, Matt Lauer. And I know Matt Lauer didn't end up doing the interview, but it was, it was the best thing that has ever happened to me. Um, Nikki, um, the light that shines, like I'm so, so grateful to Sue Bryce. And like I said, everybody that worked so hard on the light that shines. And I just um, know that how one documentary like helped and saved so many different lives. So we did the light that shines and then go to uh, New York to, for the Today Show. So after the Today Show, that's where we got like a thousand, thousands and thousands of emails. So that's when we decided um, to do um, the Jill's Wish Foundation. And I was like, you know what, obviously God gave me this to be a voice and to help other people out there and i just want to like you know uh give a shout out to a few people for the jill's wish because without these people jill's wish would not be where it's at today so um i just want to thank dan dalam who unfortunately could not be here today jim Sheehy, who is um valerie landis um dominic dipuccio and judy nesbitt they have all helped out so much to grow um, Jill's Wish, and we have done so many wonderful things. And, you know, also, you know, my husband Bart, and, you know, when we did the golf outing, I just, you know, um, my brother-in-law Patrick, my sister-in-law Beth, like just so many people I wish I could stand up here and keep thinking. And just, but I just wanna, you know, without them, like Jill's Wish, like, would not be here. So just to let you guys know, like the Jill's Wish is a nonprofit um, and it's just to help minimize the financial struggle while going through cancer. Because anybody in this room that has gone through any kind of cancer knows the financial burden that cancer brings. It's the, 
not even the, the prescriptions, the doctor bills. It's just insane how the money just adds up and adds up. And I just, you know, like I said, I felt like with Jill's Wish, you know, I just want to be able to like spread my story. And if I could raise money and share it and help other families worldwide, you know, that's what I want to do. And I'm so grateful because in the last like six months, I, we've been so fortunate to been able to raise money and we've been able to help out many families. So I'm very grateful for that. So to Jill's wish, I'm like, let's get a, an applause. <laughs> Another thing I want to um, add um, is the jelly beans barking bones. So one day I was laying in bed. This is when I was really sick. And everybody knows that your aunt, dog, if you're not a dog owner, get a dog. <laughs> because when you're sick, your animal knows that you're sick. And when I was super sick, my dog, Honey Bear, I got Stanley now. Um, my uh, mother-in-law bought me a puppy at um, Halloween. Betty, shout out to you for Stanley. Um, but anyways, Honey Bear like, totally helped me when I was going through cancer. And she was like my biggest like, companion. And when I felt so sick, Honey Bear was always there. So one day I was laying in bed and I was like, oh my god, I got to think of like, something like, to bring in income and like, something to like, show like, Honey Bear like, how much I love her. So I thought of Jilly Bean's Barking Bones, a healthy treat for a woman's breast friend. <laughs> so, um, I, um, so anyways, we, they're all natural dog treats, and you can purchase them online. You can also purchase them here. Um, and I just want to do a special thanks to my brother, Steve, because I think he's back there, but Steve, like you, I can't thank you enough for like taking my dream and financially backing it up and like doing everything that you did like to make that come true. So thanks, Steve, and hopefully, I'm like, shout out to Steve. But um, like I said, you can order them. Oh, there you are. Shout out to Steve over here. <laughs> Um, but you can order them online, and they are um, at Feeder Supply, and um, and so um, that's the other thing I was with the barking bones. So um, just um, also to, I just want to like name a couple um, events that we were so fortunate to do last October, and um, we. Um, me and Bart got to, so grateful and so fortunate. Like we got to travel and do so many things. And sorry, I don't mean to like look like I'm reading on paper, but my brain is not that big. <laughs> but we got, we're so grateful because we got to do um, the Pink Love Dance. And I know Norton's did it um, this year. But um, we, uh, I got approached by Rose Medical and they were sponsored by Novian Health. And so we went to um, Denver, and so we did the, the Pink Love contest. Um, unfortunately, we didn't win, um, but it was just like such an awesome cause, you know, and I know Norton's did it just to get the word out there about breast cancer. So that was more important to me than winning. Um, and then we did like an amazing golf outing, you know, and we had great sponsors. And, you know, a huge shout out, um, is media marketers and if you go under Jill's Wish um, I would not have that website nothing without media marketers like you know it was like free boat like what is it free bono or uh, okay I'm like free bono <laughs> but yeah I just biggest shout out to them and Jim like I just can't thank you like I mean I can't thank you enough, and media, like, thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's probably Bart's heart right now. <laughs> Bart never knows what I'm going to say. 
So it's Aunt Steve and my brother Jamie. They're probably like, the night's not over. Um, also, uh, we did an awesome event, um, Cayman Islands um, Breast Cancer uh, uh, Breast Cancer Gala. And a big shout out to Heather McLaughlin, everybody in the Cayman Islands. And that's where I got to meet Hoda. And so they invited us and like, as soon as I met Hoda, it was that instant, instant like connection, like where I was like, oh my God, I love you. And like, I felt like I knew her forever. And I'm just so grateful for that whole event and just grateful that we're invited back next year. You know, just unbelievable. And then um, an awesome event also was Tough Enough to Wear Pink, um, and that was in Las Cruces in New Mexico. And I know at the last event um, at Norton's, I was, you know, I talked about this. And this is an event, like out of any event, that really like stuck out to me because when I went to Las Cruces, we went for a week, and it was so unbelievable to me because these people like that, what they do to raise money for breast cancer. And it's so unbelievable. I don't want to say the word sad, but how many women in this town, you know, the majority is Hispanic and they will not do chemotherapy or radiation or surgery because it's mostly Hispanics and in their culture, they don't want to lose their hair and they don't want to, it's in their culture, they're like, I'm not going to do chemo, not going to do radiation, not going to do it. So when I was there and I was told this, I was like, well, you know what? We gotta go to the middle school and start young, you know, and we gotta talk to these young kids because the younger they are and we talk to them, then, you know, it'll change. So they were like, all right, well, if you have a couple days, like we'll arrange it, you know, you can go to the middle school and talk to these kids. So I was like, yeah, 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 like I'll do it. Well, it was the first time I ever you know, sat and talked to like 47th graders. And let me tell you, in a room full of you guys, it was more nerve wracking and challenging because, you know, with seventh graders, like, you know, you say the word breast and it's like, <laughs> you know, nipple. <laughs> yeah. And then I found myself laughing. I'd be like, yeah, you know, when I, my breasts, and then I was laughing. I was like, oh my God, this is bad. <laughs> I'm laughing before they're laughing. And, but it was just like, you know, it was just, it's all about like culture and the age. So it's like, you know, the younger you are, you know, when you're taught about, you know, cancer and about just body issues and all that, it's so important. And it was just like the most gratituding like thing. And I, when I left there, I know the superintendent came up to me and he's like, you know what, Jill, like you impacted these kids so much. Like, I want you to come back and, you know, and I was like, I would love to come back. And that's like the next thing really quick that I want to talk about. And I know it's not off the subject, but on the subject, but most people that know me, that love me, I'm so, so, so passionate about bullying with kids being bullied nowadays. It makes me so mad. And it's just like I was saying, you know, when I was in Vegas, like so vain about being tan, hair extensions, my nails being done and all that. And nowadays, like, I can't even imagine being a parent. And I know probably 95% of you in this room are a parent. My heart goes out to you. And more, my heart goes out <clears throat> to your children. Because I can't imagine nowadays going to school and being picked on about what you wear, what your hair looks like. You know, it just it makes me absolutely disgusting. And I just, it's like, <clears throat> like I said, I just wish so bad, <clears throat> bad. It was like, you know, it was so different. And I know it's, it, it's getting harder and harder nowadays. It just breaks my heart that <clears throat> our children you know, kids, <clears throat> sorry, like I, you know, and like I said, you know, it was so hard when I found out me and Bart couldn't have children, you know, but my nieces and nephews mean the world to me, you know. I look at my goddaughter, Avery, you know, 
and Sky and Ruthie. You know, I just can't imagine when they get to that stage where they're actually being picked on because of what they wear or, you know, or if they're too skinny, if they're too fat. Like, it just absolutely disgusts me. So I just hopefully, before I die, I just hopefully, I know it's not going to change, but, and I, like I said, I know I'm going completely off, off what I'm talking about, but I just, that's one thing, you know, I honestly, I don't, somebody asked me, like, what do you pray for, like, when you go to bed? And, you know, of course, like, I pray, you know, that they're going to find a cure, but I honestly pray that, you know, my nieces and nephews, like, and even my closest, like, friends, like, I just, I just wish that was, I'm sorry, I know I'm totally off, whatever. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry I got off track. Um, anyways, that was a tough enough to wear pink in New Mexico. Um, and then we also did this amazing event in Athens, Tennessee with Mike Miller, which was uh, Judy Nesbitt's brother and was um, an unbelievable event. Um, and we, yeah, here's Judy. Um, and we, it was an unbelievable event and we also um, the Today Show with Kathy Lee and Hoda. Um, so grateful. We were invited twice with them. And when they called me and they were like, you know what, uh, Hoda wants you to be on the show. Um, every producer has to pick somebody that they're completely inspired by, and Hoda picked you. I was completely flabbergasted, like, what? And that was just probably one of the biggest honors ever and so to that like Hoda um, just she knows like so grateful and to me like she's I'm so inspired by her and so thank you so much for that and to anybody that is new that wasn't at the last speak in like in the video with Victoria's Secret well they called me <laughs> yes and you probably know I was not picked to be in Victoria's Secret. Um, but anyways, Victoria's Secret called, um, and me and my husband went out and gave us a tour, and I cannot say enough about Victoria's Secret. Unbelievable company. They do so much for cancer, cahoots it. Like, uh, my hat's off to them. So um, it was awesome when they asked me and Bart to come out to New York to come out to the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And we went out in November, had a great time. And I know my husband was absolutely miserable and did not want to be there. <laughs> and was blindfolded, like, get me out of here. I don't want to even look at these women. They're ugly. But anyways, like, so that was, like, an awesome event. Um, also, like, Brides Against Breast Cancer, we, like, did that. Um, Huffington Post, like, has done numerous stories. Um, and then we also did Chick Miss, and thank you, Dana Banks, like for making that happen. And then we also did um, an event um, at Christmas uh, for Jill's Wish. Um, and then we did an awesome movie event um, in Michigan, and thank you, Don and um, Aaron, for doing that. And then um, also we did uh, we went to LA and did the Love Twelve Pro excuse me the Love Twelve Project. Um, with Tracy, and you can order um, those calendars online, and this calendar is absolutely amazing. It's all breast cancer survivors, and like I said, you just go to love12.com, and then um, also another project that I did was a video um, with Dana, um, and it's, um, that project is Anna Ono, and it's um, this upcoming new prosthetic bra, and they're absolutely beautiful, and it's not out yet. It's coming soon and I'll keep you posted on that. Um, and are you, are, are you guys bored? No. Okay, I just never want to like be boring. Because if you're bored, I can dance. <laughs> good. I'm a good dancer. So anyways, and I probably will dance at the end. So anyways, also I just want to do, um, uh, a couple, like before I forget, like a couple shout outs and things. And I, everybody, if anybody knows me, I'm so bad at 
pronouncing names, so I'm probably going to pronounce half the, like, half the names wrong. But Lee Delaney. Okay. Um, and then Dana um, Allen, and these are um, with Norton's. And also a shout out to Norton's, because I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, um, calling me and having me speak. And I also, at the last event, I said, you know, I've gotten so many emails from so many different doctors and hospitals, Miami, like all around the world, like, you know, hey, you know, please come, we'll pay your airfare, um, like, treatment, everything, and I'm like, in Bart, my family, everybody knows, like, I always said, you know what, it's me, Dr. Seeger, or nothing. <laughs> we come in a package, and like, I would never, in Norton's, you know, like, I just, uh, never, like, Norton Hospital, and in Dr. Seeger, like, there's no way, like, no way, so. Um, also, I want to also, yeah. Um, also, Laura Ugner, I'm with the Career Journal. I just want to thank her because she um, has followed my journey. And it's, it's so nice because, you know, especially on Facebook, you know, people all around, you know, the United States and stuff, everybody knows, um, with me, I'm absolutely horrible at um, cell phones, uh, returning calls, and Facebook. And she has, you know, unbelievable, like, kept posting my journey and, you know, like, letting everybody all around know what's going on with me. Um, also, I want to thank Media Marketing, Jim Sheehy. Um, without them, you know, I would not have the website for Jill's Wish, and I just, cannot thank you guys enough. Um, also, um, I'm going to say it wrong. Um, Escorn Oil. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard them. Can you, yeah. Um, it's awesome because um, I'm so bad. You would think that I did not graduate. Um, they. <laughs> They did um, every, the first of every Wednesday, um, the, pro, the a profit of oil changes, they donate um, to Jill's Wish. So I just want to do a quick thank you um, to them. Also, um, PMR um, company, they've, you know, uh, when they found out that me and Bart, um, our cancer came back, they did a huge fundraiser. It was unbelievable what they've done, you know, raising money and, you know, helping us out when our with our rent and when times were tough. So huge shout out to them. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Carly Siegel, uh, Brian Cohen, and Hoda Kobe at the uh, Today Show. Um, and as soon as uh, I get my drain out, um, so I don't know if most of you guys know, but unfortunately I got a little setback. So about a month, like three weeks ago, um, the fluid kept building up in my left lung. And so they had to put a catheter in my left lung. And so now I have a drain in my left lung. And, um, and unfortunately, I can't fly. But when I talked to Hoda, she's like, oh my god, as soon as you can fly, we want you back because the Today Show wants to do like a cooking segment with you. <laughs> so. I'm like, okay, can we order pizza? <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you'll see me on the Today Show soon. So anyways, a shout out um, to all of them. And then um, in a second, I'm not going to be reading from the, these cards, but I just got the worst uh, memory, so that's why I have to read these. Um, and then a really quick though, to everybody who has donated uh, money to Jill's Wish, and it sent me and Bart cards and flowers and the calls and texts. Like, I just cannot thank you enough. And, you know, if I have not responded, like I said, I'm so sorry. Like, I just, there's not enough time in the day. And, you know, and I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, after I got out of the hospital, like, Dr. Seeger knows, like, you know, I kind of went into a funk, almost a depression. And, you know, when you get into, like, that funk and depression, it's like you don't want to call and talk to anybody. And, 
you know, and to be honest with you guys, I am out of that funk. <laughs> Um, and then um, this is uh, just the last couple things I want to say. And this, I'm like, this is where I'm going to stand. Hopefully this doesn't look too short. <laughs> um, this is really quick, though, like what I truly, truly want to say to every single woman in this room and live streaming, every woman, woman man, especially a child. Like, I just can't tell you enough, and it's, probably gonna make me cry like I know I know what you're going through and please like do not I don't give up because I know I know what it feels like it sucks I'm not gonna lie it totally sucks like you're so sick of what pill to take and being poked and whatever but you know there's so much you know you got it even if even if you don't have like somebody around you, and because like I said, I've gotten so many emails from people that are so alone and they don't have anybody. You have somebody, you have me. And like, just keep fighting because like you cannot give up. And I was just telling my girlfriend, um, my best friend Mandy today, I was telling her, I said, you know what Mandy, it's so funny how four and a half years ago when I looked in the mirror and I had no boobs, and then, you know, then I had my prosthetic, and then I had one boob, and then I have no hair, no eyelashes, and whatever. Like, I just felt, like, so ugly. Like, I didn't even feel like a woman. And I can honestly stand here and tell you guys that when I stand in the mirror, and before I get in the shower, and I look in the mirror, and I look at every single scar, if it's, like, not the scar from my port, or it's not, you know, my scar from where they removed my implant, or from my drain, you know, or anything. I have never in my entire life, and I swear to God to all you guys, I have never in my entire life have ever felt more like a woman than I do today. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I, I truly, Truly, this is, this is a woman, you know, not like what you see, you know, on a magazine or even the Jill that you saw five years ago. This is a woman because this is a woman standing in front of you guys that battled cancer for four and a half years and I'm not, not going anywhere. And... And I know on the video, like, you know, when Hoda said, you know, that I had months to live, you know, I, you know, I, I do have months to live. I have 12,000 months to live, <laughs> you know, and I just, I just can't express to you guys enough and to everybody in this room, you know, about being confident and beautiful. You know, every single one in this room cannot lie to me and tell me that when you look in the mirror, there's never been a point in your life or probably yesterday or today that you feel insecure about something. You know, everybody in this room looks in the mirror and probably thinks, you know, I'm too fat, you know, maybe I'm too thin or I'm losing my hair or hopefully women, I have too much facial hair. <laughs> I went through that too. You know, but everybody in this room has gone through something where they feel so insecure about. But the thing is, is that everybody in this room has gone through that where they, you feel so insecure. And you know what? Like, just let that go and just live life and just be so thankful and grateful. Like my mom always told me, you know what? If it's, you know, money, like problems, whatever, like out the window, but it, when it's your health, yeah, like that's the problem, but like live each day like it's your last and just, you know, be so grateful for what you got and be so loving and caring and kind. And, you know, like one last shout out to every woman or man in here that is battling cancer or have gone through it. Like my hat's off to you because keep fighting. And like, I mean, I would give my life if it meant yours. And I'm just so grateful 
that Norton asked me to be here and to speak in front of you. And, you know, like I said, I just I have, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have the best family. You know, I have the best brothers, the best husband, in-laws, everything in the best doctor. And just thank you for that. Like, hold on, I feel like I forgot something. Um, <laughs> Oh no, I got one more thing to say. Um, so uh, anyways, so like I said, like with Jill's wish, um, so we started this um, and if you guys get a chance, um, we do have the booth for the Barking Bones and they're all natural free and I, hopefully your dog will love them. And then um, also like Jill's wish, you can go under jillswish.org to donate and then you know, um, the money will go to families out there going through cancer, not just women, uh, men. Oh, these are the dog bones. This is um, chicken and cheese, all natural. Um, and then just the back tells the story in all natural. And, um, but like I said, I'm just so grateful to be standing here. And I know um, I'm gonna die of cancer. I know there's not gonna be a cure in my lifetime. And I've, I've accepted that. But before I die, I just want to make sure that I'm able to touch as many lives as possible and to change as many lives as possible and just to put, like, love and gratitude and compassion back in people because along the way, we lost that. I don't know how we lost that, but we've lost that. You know, I don't... We've lost that, so... To you, I just stand here and I'm so grateful and I'm so, my gratitude to all of you being here to watch me speak makes me speechless and I just cannot thank you enough. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. I hope I didn't ramble. <laughs> she can ramble all she oh wants to. Um, you know, I kept thinking, how would you summarize um, what Jill means to so many people? And it's the beauty inside out that you were about. And you know, when what she says, she took adversity and you've turned it around to try to make a difference. And I think you've done it beautifully, and you're a blessing to us and for all the people who are battling cancer, like my sister Debbie. Yeah. You, know, you hang in there, and every day's a gift. Thank you, Jill. God Thank bless you. you. All right. On behalf of Norton Healthcare, we want to thank you all for coming. This is just the first of um, our events. Go confidently, and you're absolutely the best person to start that. Uh, these vendor booths are going to be open for a little bit longer. Buy those dog biscuits. My dogs will get some tonight. Yeah. And I'm going to go to jillswish.com, right? Dot org. Dot org, and make that donation. Anybody got a question? We've got Mike set up. Do you mind taking a couple of questions? No, for not folks? at all. Anybody who have a question for Jill or a shout out? Questions. We could be here all night. Yeah. But you know, for women, go, here, there's a microphone back over here. Let's be Bart. Babe. <laughs> hey, Bart. He's really handsome. Woo this is my um, beautiful husband, ladies. <laughs> Keep your hands off. This is Bart. He's, yeah. Hi, um, my name's Amy. Um, some time ago, I um, had sort of a coincidence happen to me pertaining to Jill. Um, I had a friend of mine send me a, the YouTube video of um, the light that can shine. And um, it was in the middle of me taking chemo. And um, some time after I saw that video, I had the opportunity to go to a friend's wedding. And she was at the wedding. And um, I walked up to her and told her that, and I don't know if you remember me, but I walked up and told her that I had a brain tumor 
and I was in the middle of um, taking chemo at that time. And since then, I am in remission. And I just want to tell you, <laughs> I just want to tell you that, um, and anybody here that has ever been through this, um, it is a very devastating thing. And um, what I know that you've done is given people confidence to look within and find something within themselves that just keeps them going every day. And I don't know you on a personal level, but I'm so proud of what you're doing, and I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I mean, you have no idea what that means to me. I mean, I was saying earlier, the emails and comments like that, that's my chemo. And honestly, that's what keeps me going. And it's not, you know, the, the emails that I get, like, oh, my God, thank you, Jill, for showing your scars and showing your breasts and all that. It's, it's the other way around. It's like the emails and, like, that's what keeps me going. So thank you. Like, I mean, right back at you. Oh, my God, this is the, my angel, Dr. Sega. the lady that's saving my life. <laughs> I love her. She's shy. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Can you, okay. Um, my name is Sandra, and I recently saw your video on, uh, I think it was Facebook, somebody sent me a link. I'm going through stage four um, bone cancer as well. Um, I was diagnosed in March of this year. And you were very inspiring to me because it was in the middle of the night, and that's my hardest time because there's nobody to call or nobody to talk to, and you're alone with your own thoughts. And I just wanted you to know that it was very inspiring and very encouraging to me to reach out to other people and not think of myself first like that, like you're doing. And I just wanted to thank you. And um, I've been praying for you. And um, you're just a beautiful person inside and out. And thank you so much for touching my life. Wait. Don't leave. <laughs> Wait, before you leave, though, um, I want to get your, your number because I can't sleep at night. <laughs> so, honestly, we can just stay up and talk at night because if you can't sleep, I can't sleep either. <laughs> Please don't leave. My name is Amy. Excuse me. I have stage four ki kidney disease. And I, my question to you is, how do you and Bart deal with the bad times? Do you all fight? Because my husband does, and I'm not. <laughs> no, you have no idea. My, <laughs> my husband's a fixer. I'm the emotional one, as you can tell. But my husband thinks that if he can't fix it, then it, it doesn't be fixed. He thinks what if you can't fix it? If he can't fix, if he can't fix my, my kidneys, I need a kidney uh, transplant. I'm currently on the list. And I also know that about 10 to 15 years after you're on the, after you get your kidney and you're on the anti-rejection meds, there is a better chance of cancer coming. My mother was a cancer. She survived cancer for a year and then it came back. So I know that because I'm the first line, there is a good chance that I could get it. I know I, I know God is in control. I'm fully aware of that. But it's hard in the human world to think 
like God and to know that it will be okay. But how do you two deal with the setbacks? How do you, how do you deal with the, the, the bad parts? Because you can't tell me he can't get up, he doesn't get upset. I mean, he has to because he's human. But does he, does he just go off by himself and get upset and not let you see it? Thank you for asking that and not to put like light to any situation, but anybody close to me, Bart goes off because I make him. Like I'm a beast. <laughs> like not to be like to light of the situation, but standing here being like so like sweet, like innocent Jill, there's another side of me. <laughs> and Bart is like, you know, and that's the thing, like people don't realize like, you know, being married for five years, like what we've like dealt with, people don't go through that after being married for 20 years and it's so hard. And it's like, you know, like I said earlier, like, you know, it's, it's, and I didn't mean to be, you know, personal like with our sex life, but like, you know, when you, your sex drive is taken away, you know, and then, yeah, you know, and just like the moodiness and, you know, and the why me and all that. And then, you know, there's another side to it, Bart. I'm not just going through cancer. Bart's going through cancer. And it's so, so hard. And we've had so many, so many fights. And that's where I'm so grateful that, you know, he has such an awesome best friend. And that's his brother, Patrick. And that's his gateway where he goes and he vents to Patrick. And I've said to so many different people, like, I'm so blessed because, you know, I bitch and complain that, you know, yeah, my husband, you know, could clean better. But, <laughs> so, sorry, Bart, but he's, yeah, he's not the cleanest person, but he's the most loyal, honest person ever. And, but that's the thing, like, you know, and I've said that. People see the, the video, The Light That Shines, and they think it's this awesome love story. And it is. But there's also, like, another side to that love story where it's, like, you know, the, the fights and the yelling. And, you know, because... And that's why, like, in the Cayman Islands, like Hoda said, when I was up there, it's not just me going through cancer. It's my husband, you know? Like, we have knock down drag out fights where it's just like it's just so unfair and it's just so just like my advice to you it's like you just it's the best thing when they say let go and let god and you just have to like communicate and you know what i don't even know what to tell you because we're still in that trial and error like i mean we still like constantly once a week just like constantly fight and it's so unfair and it's so unfair what you're going through and if I could give you my kidney I would but you know what your husband is you know he loves you because he's you wake up and your husband's there like and that's you know so my I don't even know what advice to give to you except you know if you wake up every day and he's there and he still loves you you're married to a good man you know But you, Bart, you still need to clean. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any um, questions? friend that's uh, in stage four breast cancer, not very long to live, it looks to be. And what do you do as a friend to support that person? I mean, what is the one thing that you can do? You know what? Um, I, I don't even know that answer to that because I, I'm sure that I have every friend and family member out here that's probably asking the same exact question. But it, it's funny because my, my girlfriend, Jenny Brown, um, asked me a couple months ago. She's like, you know what, Jill? If you died tomorrow, like, what would you come back as? And I was being silly, and I was like, 
I would probably come back as Chardonnay. And <laughs> so everybody, <laughs> it's so silly, but I was, at the time I was like, you know, yeah, I want to come back as Chardonnay. But honestly, I told Bart the other day, like, I want to come back as the wind so everybody can feel me, you know? And that's how I feel. And to you, to your friend, and it's so hard for me to answer this because I know one day I'm going to be your friend. And I just, just continue to love her and just do everything. Like, I would ask her, like, write down everything, like, on your bucket list. And I'm sure, like, right now it's probably things that maybe she can't even, like, you know, go and do. But, like, just as a friend, like, just do everything in your power just to be there and make her laugh and, you know, and just just continue to be a friend and just make her laugh and, like, just love her, like, you know. I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, yeah, I'm, like, I, my answer probably, it's just, that's not, just yeah, just be there for them because, you know, I lay in bed every single day and always think, like, just be there for them. Thank you. you know? Oh, you're welcome. What a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. My you're handsome. <laughs> Better get your eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Bill, and uh, one year ago this month, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, thanks to the good doctors at Norton, uh, cancer free, we're here. <laughs> and you inspired me to get up here and tell this to all you men out there. It's very important to get checked regularly. You have to decide what's important. Thanks, pleasure to meet you. And really quick, thank you so much for sharing that because, um, you know, with my speech and all that, I just can't stress enough to women and men. Like I said, I had an inverted nipple and I ignored it for over a year. And I always think to myself, would I be in the boat I am in today if I went right away to get it checked out? And if you have any kind of sign, you know, it, inverted nipple, uh, you know, uh, a lump, discoloration on your skin, you know, whatever. And the other thing I have to, like, stress out, and I'm not, you know, an advocate on this, but with tanning booths, I was the biggest tanner. And nowadays, like, I spray tan, whatever, and I just can't stress enough. Like, I mean, if I could go back and do things differently, I'm not saying that being in a tanning booth caused my cancer, but I just wish I would have done things completely different and was more healthier. But... If you see anything, like a man and a woman knows their body better than anybody. And if you feel like something's wrong, go to the doctor. Like when in doubt, check it out. Yeah. You know, I think this, oh, go ahead, Bill. Just a quick shout back. I had a bad experience with the first biopsy. And if it hadn't been for my wife of three and a half years, urging me to go back and see somebody else. I'd have never done it. Oh. And she is my friend. On behalf of Norton Healthcare, uh, again, make oh, a little wow. card for Jill if you've got time. Yeah. Put it in the box in the back. Fill out your evaluation cards. We have another program coming up um, the end of February. Just stay tuned for those. Again, I think talking about things, learning, educating yourself about different health issues can make all the difference.